Good morning from the beautiful foothills of Harmonis. Today we are out looking for some really interesting Xeric Drosseras and Ridula. Some really fun stuff like Drosseras Slackii. So we're going to go climb up and up and up. It's a nice fresh early morning. A high of about 23 degrees Celsius in Harmonis today. So we'll make for a very pleasant hike I hope. Let's see what we can get. We're now part of the way up the hills here in Harmonis. The view is really, really incredible. It's a beautiful day. A lot of people on the trails. We still have quite a bit of up to go. So here we have our first Sundays of the day, just a few steps from the last clip. This is a whole lovely little patch of Drosera xerophila. This was described in 2017. It's a lovely little dry growing rosette species. You can see the ground here, it's very sandy, very dry, it's just dipping out and all this fainbos vegetation. These get fed by the frequent mountain fogs. The soil is slightly damp. It's all nice and cool here. Down the shade, but it should get warm later in the day. But they press on, despite it being February, the hottest month of the year, and they're still looking fine. So here we have found our second species, still on the slopes. Drosera glaberipes, a really lovely stem-forming Xeric sundew. It's got a nice stem, all the leaves come out of it. And it's also still growing wonderfully, despite it being very warm summer here. It's growing sheltered in the bushes, still on the slopes. I believe southern facing, it's catching a lot of catchment. Water is chilling nicely here in the foothills. So here we have some baby Drosera glabripes sticking out between all the dead material. I also found a dead stem to illustrate to you the general form of the plant. It forms a long woody stem. Leaves growing off of it, grows upwards, they get quite tall, around 40 centimeters. So all in all, a rather interesting and beautiful species. So here we have a very cute little treasure. This is what is known as the Utricularia species Hermanus, which I can't focus on very well. It's growing here in this very nice little CP pot, a stream running down here. Super moist, super wet. It actually flows just down here. Here and there are these beautiful banks of sort of golden yellow sphagnum. And then that's every now and again are some dross for admirabilis. So I'll find some nice ones to give you a better view later. These ones are not the best looking, but it's a really, really fantastic, cute little spot. So here are some really precious plants. This is Drosera estrocyniae, another dry growing plant. This one has semi erect leaves and grows in this dry, well, fairly dry, slopey area and dense vegetation. I saw a baby down here. I mean, it's very white quartzic sand. I think it's very well draining. It gets fogged often, but it doesn't stay wet, which is what these Eric Sundews like. For sustenance, as you can see, it's all guys are growing fairly dry, but happy chappies, nice and dewy. They got fantastic color to them. The species is a really awesome yellow and green in full sun. There is another very nice Estudhesania specimen. It's growing on the edge of bushes here on the path. It's really Probably magnificent. My focus is locked for some reason. But wow. I mean, the color is just indescribable. It's a shame these aren't more cultivated. And here we can see two of the Xerics living together. There's Estere Senye, and just a smidge over, hiding over here, Xerophila, which has flat, rounded leaves, not much of a petiole. Meanwhile, Estere Senye has a nice bare petiole at the base, up semi erect leaves much taller overall and there they are growing together very nice so here we have the real gem of the coastal Oberg area Drosera slackii and there are a lot here I mean loads and loads and loads hiding here in the shade cannot get enough of them They're living in this sort of PT seepage just across the path Let's give you a better idea it's very bad exposure. It's super wet, super peaty, quite different to 
a lot of the dry growing Sundays here there's a lot of sand in this as well so yeah rather neat try peat sand for your slack yeah guys here we have a few nice ones sitting pretty in the sun for us also very sandy peat so a lot of living here in the shade they probably get afternoon sun I'm guessing if we zoom out that's how the habitat is looking so here we are at what I consider to be one of my favorite places on planet earth sitting before us are oh, some really really beautiful grass or slack yeah they're a little bit hard to spot here in this golden moss two steps over we have clusters of insane dross for admirabilis it's really really gorgeous in the sun lovely water flickering through that's not the best part the best part is all this radiola look at it all going all the way down this little rift full of water here unbelievable let's kind of have a little closer look so before us we have one of the coolest conivorous plants in the world or as some people call it proto conivorous i would tend to disagree so first we have to look at their manner of conivory Iridula do not digest insects themselves said they have these nifty little pamarid bugs to love on them it's a symbiotic relationship the bugs pretty much live out their entire life on the plant they eat here they sleep here they poop here which is a very important part because the iridula is very sticky makes resin that's too sticky for had to put digestive enzymes through unlike sundews which is a water-based mucilage these use resin you just cannot put enzymes through so once you've trapped the bug what do you do with it then these hassan bugs are the solution they come out and they nibble on everything there's a lot of carcasses on these plants I'm being called. So to continue, once trapped, the assassin bugs will quickly scatter over and consume whatever unfortunate insect landed on the plant and gobble it up, as assassin bugs do. They then go to the underside of the leaf and excrete into the pores and the radula absorbs the nutrients. So it's a bit of a win-win. The bug gets nutrients, the plant gets nutrients. The assassin bugs live out their entire lives on these plants, so they pollinate the flowers hop between them and they lay their eggs in the stems of the plant and then hatch out and the cycle continues. It's pretty interesting and they're fully endemic to these plants. That's one of the only really cool symbiotic carnivorous methods that are out there. These bugs are incredibly elusive and hard to film but here is one sitting on the leaf. They spend their time chilling here the earliest sign of danger they tend to run run for the hills and they hide in the bracts and different parts of the plant so that is all the sundew hunting for today thank you for joining me and i will see you in the next one